a look at solving some one-step equations that contain rational numbers. And remember these rules from the other day of how to solve a one-step equation. Locate the variable. Determine the operation tied to the variable. So remember, there's only four operations. So there's addition and subtraction. And there's multiplication and division. So in solving an equation, you always have to use an inverse operation. And don't forget to do it on both sides of the equal sign. So let's take a look at question number one here. A minus 17.9 equals 32.4. So here's the equal sign, which separates the left side from the right side. On this left side, we have our variable A and our constant of subtract 17.9. So if I want to isolate my variable, if I want to get my letter A by itself, I need to remove this constant. So if I'm going to do the opposite, I have to use this number. I can never write 32.4 down under here if I want to isolate A. So the operation that is tied to the variable here would be subtraction, and the inverse of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add something to both sides. We can add anything we want. But the reason we're going to add 17.9 is because these two numbers are additive inverses. And additive inverses add to 0, which would leave us with a plus 0, or just a. Now you're going to use your calculator to help you solve these problems so that we can answer them a lot quicker. So we're going to calculate here 32.4 and 17.9, or plus 17.9. So we're going to type on our calculator 32 decimal point 4, and then we're going to use our plus sign here, and 17.9, and we press enter, and we're all set. So A is equal to 50.3. Take a look at the second question. 14.7 is equal to 15.3 plus n. So here's our equal sign which separates our sides, and this side is the location of the variable. So this is the side we're going to use to choose our inverse. The inverse of adding is subtracting. Now I see a lot of students doing this, putting a subtraction sign right underneath here, but that's a little bit awkward and it actually means something different that we have 15.3 and then we're going to minus something. So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze that minus sign in front there and keep this math valid. So I've done it once to the left side and once to the right side. And here I've created an inverse, so that makes zero. So I've got 14.7 minus 15.3. We're going to clear our calculator by pressing the clear button here. And we're going to type 14. Seven. And now we have a couple of options. We can either press subtract 15.3, but when I show students how to do this, they'll sometimes say to me, but that's a negative 15.3, and that's true. Um, but once I evaluate this and get my right answer, the only other way to use this as a negative sign, which would be this button right down here, would be if that I would say that I'm combining 14.7 with a negative 15.3. And if I'm combining 14.7 and negative 15.3, if I'm combining these things, 14.7 and negative 15.3, if I'm combining those things, the word and would mean plus. This and that, right? So 14.7 plus a negative 15.3. You could do that, and we get the same answer. Negative 0 0.6. So negative 0 0.6. But you do not want to type 14.7 minus negative 15.3. Do not want to type that, because if you type that, 14.7 minus a negative 15.3. That's a totally different operation, and you get a totally different answer. So be careful.
All right, let's take a look at our other two operations. So don't forget our operations are addition and subtraction, which we just did, and multiplication and division. And these two here are a little tricky because now that you're in pre-algebra, these symbols never appear like this anymore. Most times, this operation right here of multiplication is often invisible. You can't even see it. You can show it with a little dot. You can show it with a pair of parentheses. But most oftentimes, it can be invisible if it is a combination of a numeral and a variable, like this one right here. When you read this, it states negative 4.5 times p. You can't see it, but there's some timesing in there. So the inverse of multiplication is division. And we don't use this symbol anymore to show division. We simply write our fraction bar on both sides to show that we're going to divide these quantities. So negative 4.5 multiplied by p. The inverse of that would be dividing by negative 4.5. Now notice I don't change the signs here because you can only do one inverse and you're doing the inverse of the operation. So the operation is multiplication, so the inverse is division. You don't change the coefficient. So negative 4.5 here. Get your calculator ready, clear your screen. And these two are multiplicative inverses. And multiplicative inverse is not the same as additive inverses. Multiplicative inverse, when you reduce them, reduce to one. And so I could certainly write a one here, but it really isn't necessary. You can leave that one off and just write P. And then we're going to use our calculator to actually perform negative 60.3 divided by negative 4.5. And we get 13.4. The answer is 13.4. All right, let's try one more here. So this one, if I separate my sides and I locate my variable, the operation that's tied to the variable is actually addition of a negative 8.5. So I'm going to concentrate right here on the constant and concentrate on its sign, not the sign of k. The sign of 8.5 is negative, so the inverse of that is positive. 8.5, positive 8.5. Additive inverses create zero, which we can leave invisible. And we're going to use our calculator to add negative 27.8 and 8.5. So clear this out. Negative 27.8 plus 8.5. Negative 19.3. Now, as I'm typing, sometimes I, I might press a wrong key. So what I want to do when I'm done is actually check to see if my answers are right. So I'm going to look here at my original equation. So I'm going to erase all this right here so I can see it a little bit better. And let's give this a try. Negative 4.5 times p. Well, p is 13.4. So we're going to multiply it by 13.4, and we're going to check. Is it actually equal to negative 60.3? So let's check. Clear this out. Negative 4.5 times 13.4. And we got it right. Let me show you something, another way that you could write this. You see how I inserted a multiplication sign because I knew that this meant to multiply. But if you didn't know or you just wanted to type it exactly how you see here, you could use these parentheses buttons. So negative 4.5, parentheses, 13.4, close parens, and the calculator understands that that means multiplication. Pretty cool. You can just type what you see and the calculator will figure it out. All right, let's take a look at our last two. If I separate my sides here and I locate my variable, and I identify the operation that's tied to it, it's division. And the opposite of division is multiplication. But I'm going to use parentheses to show it. So I know I need to multiply both sides. And what am I going to multiply by? I have to multiply by the coefficient. The coefficient is always located on the same side as the variable. It's often attached to it. 
in front multiplier or underneath as a divisor, divider. So I'm going to multiply by 0.3 to both sides, cross off my multiplicative inverses, which make an invisible one, and write my final answer, which is 0.3 times 16. So clear this out, 0.3 times 16, and get my final answer, 4.8. Now I'm going to do a quick check step again here. So 16 is equal to y divided by 0 0.3. And we said y was 4.8. So is this actually equal to 16? Let's check. 4.8. Clear this out. 4.8 divided by 0.3. Yep, it checks. Okay, last one. Locate my variable, identify the operation, which I cannot see. So 1.6 is multiplying m, that makes this a coefficient. And to clear a coefficient, you have to use multiplication or division. And that one is an invisible multiplication. So we are going to use division. Division of 1.6 on both sides to get a cancellation here or a reducing of 1. And negative 9.44 divided by 1.6. Negative 9.44 divided by 1.6. This is much faster with our calculator. Negative 5.9. If you want to know if you're right, just double check. Negative 5.9 would insert here. So is 1.6 times negative 5.9 equal to negative 9.44. So it is 1.6 times negative 5.9. It is. We got it right.